Hi, everyone, and welcome to our Intro to Canto webinar. We are so glad that you've joined us today. I am Kelly Miller, the Customer Relationship Manager here at Canto, and today we have with us Account Manager Emily Ebers. And during this webinar, Emily will give us a Canto product tour, and towards the end, we'll answer some of your questions. So if you have a question at any time during Emily's walkthrough of Canto's features, please type it in the questions tab and we will either answer it live at the end of the webinar or follow up with you afterwards. So starting off here, our goal at Canto is to help you be as efficient and as productive as possible in your work. We do this by enabling teams to take back the time and resources spent on digging through and organizing brand assets to be used for your most impactful projects, whether that is designing the website or strategizing public relations or building marketing campaigns. Canto is really simple to understand and simple to use, and it allows brands to centralize, organize, and share digital assets, no matter the size of their library. So now to give you an overview of Canto's features, I will hand it over to Emily. Perfect. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. You should be able to see my screen now. Uh, as Kelly said, I am one of the account managers here at Canto. So my job is to work with our existing customers to help them maximize the content that they have in Canto. And the feedback I have heard over the past couple months is that digital asset management has never been more important than it is now. I hear time and time again that we couldn't do this whole remote work situation without having our assets loaded in Canto. So with that, I'm excited to kick off our mini tour into Canto. I'm going to start right here from the main login screen. So one of the great things about Canto is we give you a tool that, as Callie said, is very simple to use in part because it's all assembled out of the box, but we also give you a lot of ways to customize it to fit your team's branding. So right here in the main landing screen, you can see you can customize your logo and you can customize your main photo background here. The first thing you're gonna see when we log in here is we have your library set up to be really visually friendly. A lot of you are probably familiar with what we're going to look at right here on the left hand side, which is going to be your folder structure. But from the get go, the first thing you are going to see when you log in is this visually appealing, very simple layout of your visual assets. So let's go ahead and turn our attention left. This is going to be something very familiar to you and your teams. You have your folder structure. When you choose to import your assets into Canto, you can stick with your existing folder structure or you can create a new one. But either way, you have this as a reference system for all your assets. But what we like to do differently is we like to give you more ways to navigate your content. Your users don't have to memorize your exact folder structure. They don't have to know where everything is because we've given them a lot of different ways to access your content. Let's take a look at an asset so I can tell you what I'm talking about. So we have this photo here of a dog with a backpack. And as you can see, you have your file name, which is usually how users have to find content. They have to search exactly by some sort of reference to the file name. Well, if we look here, we have more than that. You have a description, you have your keywords, you have tags, you have smart tags, and you have a number of different custom fields that we can use as a reference to your assets. So with all that metadata, you have a couple different ways to reference it. So let's go ahead and swing up top here and we have our search bar. So if I wanted to find this dog with a backpack photo, I can do just that. Let me look for dog and backpack. And there we go. So instead of having you come through a folder tree to find it, although I can do that as well, I can just go ahead and search for exactly what I'm looking for. Let me introduce you to another one of our features here, and that is going to be our filter panel. So here we're gonna have our filter panel. So you have your keywords and your tags, and you can use these to narrow down what you're looking for. So let's say, let me show you another example of a search. 
let's say I want to find something with a lake in it. Let's search for a lake. Okay, um, let's say I also want a brand image. So here I can combine the power of my search as well as my filter panel here. So I want it to be in one of our brand categories. And maybe I also want it to be a lifestyle image. So as we can see, I've narrowed it down from my entire image library to nine items just by plugging in a couple words that are a combination of file name, description, keywords, and tags. So here, what we have done is we have given you and your users a really easy way to find your content that's based on things they can describe, things they know, and things they can remember. With that content, though, we have some ways to customize how users see things. One of my favorite features and one feature I hear time and time again from my users as being really helpful are my collections. A lot of you have probably been in this situation where you have people who are constantly emailing you for these exact same pieces of content. They probably say, hey, can you give me the top 10 assets for our brand campaign? And you've probably emailed those same assets out probably three times this week already. So what you can do is you can actually go into your library and you can favorite your content. So I love this dog with a backpack photo. I think it's awesome. Um, let's also go ahead and favorite these photos. I'm gonna go ahead and add these to my collections. I'm done. When I come back to my collections, I can see all of these assets here. So now when people keep asking me for the exact same pieces of content over and over again, one, you can give them a Canto login, but two, you can also share out directly from my collections. So I'm gonna show you a couple more things in the main library, and then I'm gonna take you on, to in, on a spin of a couple other things we have. So we talked about my collections, we talked about the filter panel, and we talked about the search bar. One of the most powerful things about Canto is you can combine all of these resources to maximize the potential that you have to find your content. So I showed you how to search. I showed you how to search using the filter panel. Now let's say that I also know I want to find something that's within a specific folder. I can use the search bar here and narrow it to within results. So if I want to find a photo containing water just within Bungalox Resorts, instead of searching through my entire folder tree, I can just search directly in here. And there we go. I found just my assets that I was looking for. So within Canto, you have a couple different kinds of users. You're gonna have your power users who are gonna be your content loaders, creators, taggers. And then you're also going to give access to consumers who are your view only users. They will be able to download content, view it and use it, but you don't have to worry about them accidentally deleting a file like you might have in another provider. So your content is always safe. Your content is always secure and you can be really careful about how you give people access to your content. One way you can give people access to your content is through a portal. Now what a portal is, I'll show you a listing here, is a portal looks like a custom designed website around a section of your content. It gives you the ability to give a certain group of users access to a specific section of your content. Let me show you. So you guys saw the Mungalux Resorts folder you can now see the portal I have built around it, but it doesn't look like a database at all. In fact, it looks like I sort of created a custom website around it. So what we have done is we have taken the best of Canto, which is the visually appealing layout and combined it with the metadata to make, you, to make it possible for you to create this website for your users. As a user, I can go in and I can view the images here. I can still search for things. So if I wanted to search for water or beach, I could still do that using the metadata that's already been created. You can see you can add text in here, you can add links, and you can customize it to make it look very visually appealing and user-friendly for your users. So that's one way. Another thing that you will probably find helpful are style guides. I imagine that a lot of you have created long brand books with uh, key typography, with key imagery and colors. You can do all of that within Canto as well. And here, you don't have the problem of people accidentally saving the outdated version of the brand book, where then they somehow pull up logos from 2009. Um, this is dynamic. 
people can always come back here time and time again and reference the latest. They can down, even download your typography here. But as you can see, we have sample imagery, we have key messaging, and you have your RGB codes for the different colors here. So these are some of the ways that you can share content with your external users. Um, you can create multiple style guides, you can create multiple portals, and each of them can look different based on the user that you intend. I see portals used for both internal departments, if there are certain departments that you would like to see only limited things within Canto. You can also use these for external users. These are kind of the main high-level features of Canto. At the end of the day, our goal is to create a digital asset management system for you that allows you to do the most work with the content you have. If our goal is to give your users a simple, a simple and visually appealing system that they can use to do their best work. With that, I'm going to go ahead and hand it on back to Kelly. Perfect. Thanks, Emily. So we will go ahead and move on to our questions now. Um, one question is about migration. So how difficult is it to migrate content into Canto from SharePoint? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think a lot of us use SharePoint to store our files. Um, we see a lot of clients who do come from SharePoint. And one of the things that they enjoy most is how visually appealing Canto is. The good news is it is really, really easy to migrate content from SharePoint. So I'm gonna show you right here, we have external connections. All you need to do is log in with your SharePoint credentials and you can choose which folders to bring over, but Canto will automatically migrate all of your content that you have selected from SharePoint. There's no manual labor involved. It will do it automatically. It'll even run in the background, so you can leave it. And when you come back, all of your content is loaded into Canto. Great, perfect. Okay, so another one is, can you control who is downloading this content? Yeah, so you have a lot of different ways to control access to Canto. So one thing you can do is you can set up restricted content so only admin users can see it. With your portals, however, you can also edit the download status. So there might be certain types of content that you need people to request access to. So you could turn on asset request and turn off downloads. You could also turn on watermarks. So people can download your watermarked content, but they need to request the asset to receive it without a watermark. So there's a lot of different ways for you to ensure the safety and security of your content in Canto based on user. Great, okay, so we also have a couple of questions that I'm seeing that are about tagging and smart tags. Um, I can kind of batch them together, I guess. So one is, are smart tags automatically generated? And then we have a few that are, let me go back down to them. Um, mm. How are keywords and tags established? Yeah, so um, I'll start with keywords versus tags. So keywords are your high level categories. You will likely have about 10 of them. And when you create them, these are going to be the broad groupings that you're going to use to separate out your content. Um, so as you can see, can see here, we have manufacturing, brand, and retail. These are the high-level categories that people can say, I know I want something that fits retail. Your tags are going to describe everything that you see in your content. So for this, I could tag any number of things. I could tag the I can tag dog, backpack, red, forest. However, someone might try and find a piece of content, you would tag it accordingly. Smart tags are really helpful because what we have done is we have partnered with AWS and they run a scan on all of the content and automatically pull out the key features that they see. So there's no work involved with smart tags. In fact, it eliminates a lot of work on your end because even with no work, done to tag content on your end, it has already created a couple pieces of metadata that can make it easier for your users to search for that content. Okay, great. Um, we have some time to answer a few more here. Um, someone just asked, is there a limit to how many users you are able to have? 
Yeah, so it all depends on the size of the Canto package that you choose to go with. But standard, our users, our view only users are unlimited. It also depends on how you set up your library. You can set up certain portals to be private or public. With private, you require a login. With public, anyone who has that link can access the content. So at the end of the day, the answer to who can view your content, depending on how you set it up, can be unlimited. Cool. OK, so I think we have time for about two more. Um, can Canto be used for videos as well as photos? Yeah, I'm actually really happy you asked that. Um, Canto can absolutely be used for video. And I am seeing more and more customers choosing to move a lot of their video into Canto. And we've created a number of features recently to help customers better utilize their video. So we now have video transcription services. We have video smart tagging. We have video facial recognition. Um, and we have, we've, we're beginning to incorporate a number of features to make it really easy for you guys to use the video that you have in Canto. So absolutely. Great, thank you. Okay, about time for one more. Someone said, I see there's a Slack integration. Is there any Microsoft Teams integrations? Yes, so we have a Microsoft. We are coming out with a Microsoft Teams integration, but at the moment we have not created it. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Emily. So um, thank you everyone for your questions. Um, if we didn't get to yours, there, there are quite a few here. So like I said, we will be sure to follow up with you and get that answered after this webinar. And you will soon receive an email with the webinar playback. It'll just be a link. And in that email, there'll be another link to set up a meeting. And this meeting is just a really great way to get your more in-depth questions answered and just to get a look at how Canto could help your team specifically. So thank you again, Emily. That was a great walkthrough. And thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today and hope you have a great rest of your day.